Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another PS4 tutorial. So in this one, I'm going to show you guys how you can update your retail games on your jailbroken PS4. This was requested after I did the video on how to convert a retail game to a fake package backup. A lot of you guys wanted to know how to get those games updated in the first place. So that's what we're covering here in this video, because there has been a slight change in how the updates kind of work on 11.0 compared to 9.0 and previous jailbreaks. And on top of that, the homebrew app that we used to use, the patch installer, no longer works. So we have to kind of do things manually. Now, Lightning Mods might implement a similar feature in Items Flow in the future. But as of right now, uh, we don't have access to a homebrew app that we can use to easily install our game updates. So to start with, one of the issues you might run into once you get connected back up to your network and have an internet connection on your PS4 is that if you try and update one of your retail games by pressing options on it and going to check for update, you might run into this error. Now, some people will not run into this error. Some people will. So sign into PlayStation Network to use network features. Now, the reason why this happens is it's because you don't have any activated accounts on your PS4. You need to have at least one account that is activated, that has been activated with a PSN account ID. It doesn't have to be the account you're currently signed in on. It, you just need to have at least one account activated on your PS4 in order for it to let you download game updates. This is a change that did not exist in previous firmware versions, but as of 11.0, this is something that's been implemented now. If you don't have any accounts activated, you will run into this error message. So in order to fix this, you just need to activate one of your accounts. So we can go into settings, we can go to login settings, we can go to user management, create a new user account. We'll click accept, we'll skip PlayStation Network, and then we'll just create a new user. So this is user one. We now have a new user account. Then we're gonna run the Apollo save tool, which you can download from the Homebrew store. If you don't know how to install the Homebrew store, then that is covered in the first video in the playlist, which shows you how to fully set up the jailbreak from scratch. So there we go, we get the Apollo save tool up and running. We then go into the user tools section and we go to activate PlayStation 4 accounts. And then we just select the account we want to activate. In this case, I'll use the new one that I just created. And we just press R2 for done and it will activate it using a default ID. And there we go, account successfully activated. A system reboot might be required. Now I'm pretty sure it is required. So if we go ahead and exit out of the Apollo save tool, and we can try opening the browser and closing it to refresh. That might be enough. We'll see, check for update. No, okay, so we're gonna have to reboot our PS4 here. So we're gonna go ahead and restart. Okay, so I've rebooted my PS4. We're not running the jailbreak yet, but we have rebooted. So now if I press options on Bloodborne again and check for update, as you can see, we now get update is available. I can go to downloads and it's now downloading that Bloodborne update. 1.09, 8.5 gigs is now being downloaded to the console. So that's how you fix that error. You just need to have one account on your system, one account on the PS4 that is activated and it can be activated with a random ID. As long as it's activated, you'll be able to download game updates. Now, obviously if you have a DNS blocker in your settings, if you're using Nomadic's DNS, which blocks uh, system updates and game updates, you'll have to take that off in order to download the updates. Now, the good thing is with 11.0, most of the PS4 games that are available for the PS4, you can just download the latest update like this just by checking for updates, downloading the latest update, and you will be good to go. Most games are like this now because 11.0 is such a high firmware and most of the games that are available for the PS4 are old now and are not continuing to be updated that often. And therefore the latest updates will work on 11.0 and you can just download them like this and run your game with the update installed. I should also mention right here that if you're worried about accidentally installing a system update by connecting to the internet, remember that Gold Hen blocks system updates. So you tried to download 11.50, but it failed because Gold Hen blocks it. Even when you're not using Gold Hen, we're not even running Gold Hen right now, but the update is still being blocked because it's persistent. But as you can see, Bloodborne has now been successfully installed. So we should be able to check right here, go to information on the game and it is on 1.09. So it has been successfully updated. So if we run Bloodborne now, it should launch and it should run just fine because the latest update for Bloodborne 1.09 came out a long time ago. It, there's not been a new update in a very long time. Therefore it runs on 11.0 without any issues. So if we play it offline, we can see the app version in the bottom right hand corner is version nine. So we are updated. So the reason why I mention the whole thing about 
being on the latest updates and why we're able to run it is that there are some games on the PS4 where the latest update for the game requires a higher firmware to run. So I have an update for Red Dead Redemption 2, the latest version. So when I checked for update on Red Dead 2, it said version 1.32 was available, ready to be installed, as you can see there. So there we go, we've got our disk inserted. So if I go over to downloads, update, I click start, you can see this is the problem. So update file for this application has been downloaded. To update the application, you must first update the system software. So this is a problem that you'll run into on certain games. Games that are frequently updated may require a higher firmware in order to install that update. So the problem is Red Dead Redemption 2 update 1.32 requires you to be on 11.02 firmware. And of course, we need to stay on 11.0 in order to remain with the jailbreak on the PS4. So we can't install 1.32. So what we need to do is install an older update, whatever the previous update was, 1.31, 1.30, whatever it is. And we can install that update and get that working on 11.0, just not the latest version. So unfortunately, this process is a little bit more complicated because you know, you can't just search for an older update by checking for updates on the PS4. You'll need to actually download the older version of the update manually and install it uh, using like the Gold 10 uh, debug settings package installer. So let's go ahead and look at how we can do that here. So if I go ahead and get rid of this particular update file, since we can't install it anyway, there's no point in having that on there. So we've got the game on the base version right here, version 1.00. So what we need to do is switch on over to the computer. And on the computer, we're going to head to orbispatches.com, the PlayStation 4 game update database. And in here, we're going to search for our version of the game. So Red Dead Redemption 2. Now there's a bunch of different versions, US version, EU version, Japanese version. There's two European versions as well. So you need to check to see which version of the game you actually have. So you can see on my PS4, it shows the title ID at the bottom, CUSA 08519 version 1.00. Now you can find that out if yours isn't showing by going to the gold hen settings and going to the cheat settings and scrolling down to show title ID. And you want to make sure you're either showing only title ID or title ID and app version. And then once you have that enabled, it will show you the title ID of the game. You can also find it on the game disc as well as the spine of the cover. So 08519 is this European version here. So that's the version of the game I have. I'll select that option and that will take me over here. And this lists all of the different updates. And it also tells you what the required firmware version is. So you can see 1.32 is the latest update that we were trying to download directly from Sony servers but it requires 11.02, which is why we weren't able to install it on our PS4. However, if we look down at update version 1.31, this only requires firmware 9.60, so we can easily install this one on our 11.0 PS4. So all we need to do is click on 1.31. This will give us all of the links. We can then click this button here to copy all package links, and then we can just paste these in a download manager. So the download manager I recommend is going to be JDownloader2. You don't have to use this, you can use something else, but JDownloader2 is my preferred download manager for downloading package files. So if you go into the link grabber, you can right click and add new links, and then you can it will basically paste everything in your clipboard in here. If not, you can just paste it right in, and these are all of the different parts. Now the thing with game updates is that they're split into four gigabyte parts. So if your game update is larger than four gigs, there will, it will be in multiple parts here. So we need to download each part. So that's why a download manager makes it easier. So if we click continue, that will add all of the links in here. So there's all of the parts. And then if we highlight these by clicking and dragging all of them, we can move them all into one folder by right clicking and going to other and then move to a new package. And then we can just give this a name and that moves them all in here. So we've got all of the parts that will be in one place. So from here, we can just click the play button and it will start downloading all of those updates. And it should be quite fast because this is downloading the updates directly from the official servers. For some reason, Sony does not delete the older updates. So the older updates are all still there on the server, but the PS4 is only capable of finding the latest update 
uh, when you search for updates on it. So, so we're actually just downloading these directly from Sony servers, just like the PS4 itself. Okay, and once all of the parts have been downloaded, you can just right click on the folder and open download directory. And that will take you to the directory where all of the parts have been downloaded to. So we've got them all in here. Now, one of the problems we have with this method is that we can't install these one by one. We need to actually merge all of these parts into one final package that can then be installed on the PS4 to get the game updated. So to do this, we can use a program like PS4 Tools, which I've covered in a previous video. If you open this up, I'll leave it linked in the description. You just right click on the run.cmd and run it as administrator. That will install everything. And once it's installed, Whenever you right click on a package, you'll have this PS4 tools menu. So all you need to do is right click on the first part. So the underscore zero dot package, making sure all of the parts are in the same folder, which they should be. You can right click on the first part and then go to PS4 tools. And then you have the option down here to merge package parts. You're just going to select that. And then that should identify all of the different parts here. So there we go. Zero, one, two, three, four, and five and it is now merging them into one file. So you just wait for this to complete. Okay, and once it's done, we can press any key to continue and we have our merged package file here, 21 gigabytes. All we need to do is copy that over to a USB drive. So we're gonna grab ourselves a USB drive, copy it to the root of the USB. You can, of course, just copy it over using the remote package installer. In fact, with the remote package installer, you actually don't need to merge the parts together into one file, you can actually install uh, them all one by one okay so now that it's copied over you know the drill by now we're just going to eject the usb drive and plug it into our ps4 okay so on the ps4 we're just going to head to our goal 10 option debug settings package installer and then we should have our merged package file that we can select and install and since it's the 1.31 version instead of 1.32 this time we should get this installed and working okay here we go moment of truth and it looks like it has successfully installed. So you can see here it still shows on the title ID and app version that we're on one, uh, the base version. But if we hit options and we go to information, you can see we have updated to 01.31. So we're on 1.31 right now. But the reason for that is that it just doesn't refresh. You can refresh by opening the browser and closing it again. And now you'll see that it does show that it's on 1.31 on the actual app there. So that's it, we have successfully updated it and we can run this version because of course 1.31 will run on firmwares as low as 9.60, so 11.0 will be able to run the game with this update installed, even though we couldn't run it with 1.32 installed. And there we go, we are good to go. Now, there is one slight caveat about not being able to run newer updates, which is that if you're running a fake package version, that pretty much doesn't count because we have backports where people like CYB1K are able to actually dump a game that has the latest update, even though it's for a higher firmware and still backport it to work on older firmwares like 11.0. But when it comes to retail updates, you are limited by whatever the latest firmware that that update supports is. And if it's higher than 11.0, you'll have to install an older update like this so that you can actually run the game with the update installed. But as you can see, the game is running here on update 1.31. So that is how you install your game updates for your retail games. And once you have them installed, you can then turn them into fake package files so that your fake package backup version has the same update installed. If you want to know how to do that, I've already done a video that goes over that. It'll be linked in the description along with the playlist which shows you all of the other tutorials I've made in the series so far about the 11.0 jailbreak. So definitely check that out. So that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed it or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.